Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mount Studio, and today we're going to be talking about constraint-based animations. It's basically how you can change constraints and animate them to move things around on your screen. Animating constraints is a little bit different and not as direct as you might think. And it's good to understand all the components that are involved and to see why it works. By the way, the reason why I'm making this video is because about a year ago, I made a video that taught constraints. And I had used this example project that had an animation in it. Well, a viewer asked about the animation, and I replied that if we get enough likes, then I'll make a video. And this comment got enough likes. So, sorry for the long delay here, Anton. <laughs> he probably hates me. He probably unsubscribed from my channel. <laughs> but I didn't revisit this comment until recently when someone else had commented on this video. Okay, so let's go into the existing project and see what we already have set up before we implement this animation. Okay, so let's get an overview of the project and what we have so far. There are two components we're going to be working with, and that is this text field and this button right here. One is on top of the other. Actually, I could take this button and move it to the side. And as you can see, they're, they're a little bit customized because this button here, for example, is using a UI button X class, which is over here. And these two classes right here are custom implementations of controls where I basically gave them more properties to operate from. So as you can see here, it's just a UI button and I made them designable. And what that does is it takes these properties that have IB inspectable on them and allows you to see them in the attributes inspector and change them. And then you can see the effect on the storyboard. So for example, this UI button, if I come to the attributes inspector, you can see these different properties that it has. And this button is 44 by 44. So if you give it a corner radius of 22, it makes it look like a perfect circle. And then I gave it a border width and a border color. So it's a little bit customized. And same with this text field right here too. You'll see these custom properties up here in the corner. And it's also 44 by 44 right now and I give it a corner radius of 22 to make it circular. And I also changed the border style so it doesn't have a, its own line around it. And there's one more thing I want you to pay attention to here because this is important, is that this text field right now has a constraint so it is aligned to the center of the screen. Because what we're going to do is we're going to animate the width of this text field and make it wider. And if you have it aligned to the center, then it'll expand to the right and to the left at the same time. So that's important. And there's one more thing that's important too that makes this work. If you notice from the animation, the button also moved with the text field. It didn't stay in the center. And that's because there is a left constraint. Like if we take a look here. Not a left constraint. I don't know what I'm saying. It's actually a trailing constraint <laughs> is what I meant. So it is aligned. Like if we actually go into here. The button, the trailing constraint, which is on the right hand side, is equal to the trailing constraint of the text field. So that means when the text field moves, the button will move with it because it's attached to the trailing constraint of the text field. Okay, so now that you know those things, let me get this back to its original position here. Okay, so I mentioned that we need to expand this text field to make it wider. And what we need for that is we need an outlet to the constraint that controls the width of the text field right now. So I want to make sure that my text field is selected and then from here I want to select this constraint. Now there's a couple ways that you can select constraints. One of the ways you can do it is you can just hover over it and when it highlights like this you can click it. Another way is you can select the text field and come over to your size inspector. If you scroll down you'll see the constraint for the width and you can select that and it will select it over here in your document outline. So those are a couple different ways of being able to select it. Now we want to create an outlet for it. So let's create some more space here. And what I'll do is I'll just right click it from here and drag it over into my view controller and then create an outlet for it here. Alright great, so I just called it text field width constraint pretty descriptive. Now I have an outlet for the search button. So if you click the search button, it'll come into this function right here. And what I want to do here is I want to toggle the width of this text field, right? 
So if I click it once, it makes it wider. If I click it again, it makes it more narrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the existing property of the constraint. And if it's 44, that's the size of it right now, it's 44. If it's 44, I'm going to make it bigger, else I'll make it back to 44. All right, there we go. There's another way I could write this if statement and change this value. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to make it simple like this so it's easy to follow. Okay, so let's run the project and see what happens. Okay, click the button, makes it wider. Then I click it again and it makes it shorter. But we want to animate it, right? We want it to be more free flowing. So let's try to add the animation to it. All right, we'll just go with a short animation here. We'll make it one second. And then I'm going to hit tab and then hit enter. We get a little code block there. So let's just move this closing brace down here and clean up our formatting a little bit. There we go. So now this an it should animate over one second. Oh, when something is inside this code block, it's actually we're going to send these objects to the UI view animate function. So we have to tell it that it's coming from this view controller. And we just do that with the word self. I guess I can go in here and just click fix and it'll do that for me. All right, let's try that. Okay, look at that, it's not animating. So why, why isn't it animating? What's the problem here? In order to understand why it's not animating, we need to understand something else. So why wasn't there any animation? Well, this is where it gets tricky, and this is where you have to change things a little bit first. In this case, when we animate a constraint, we don't actually want to animate the change of the, the constant of the constraint. We want to animate a layout update. And we do that by calling this function called layout if needed. The layout if needed is on every view. And when you call this function, it lays out the subviews immediately if layout updates are pending. So if you call this on the root view, it's going to check to see if any of the subviews or any of the views inside of that root view need to be updated. There's an engine that is in charge of automatically laying out objects on the screen. This is what's called the auto layout engine or simply auto layout. I'm sure you've heard this term auto layout before. Well, that refers to the engine that's in charge of laying out all the objects on the screen. Layout if needed triggers the auto layout engine to make updates on the screen as needed to satisfy changes in the constraints. And that's exactly what we need. We're making changes to constraints and now we want to tell the auto layout engine to update objects on the view to match our changes to constraint values. And we're going to animate when auto layout engine makes those updates. For example, it works something like this. Say we have a UI view in our app and we want to programmatically change its height constraint to make it taller. We would change it in code and it would be considered a pending update. Then when we call view.layout if needed, it checks if there's any pending updates and updates what you see on the screen to match any updates to your constraints. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to animate the view.layout if needed. It's going to look for pending updates and it's going to make those updates in an animated fashion. Okay, so let's go back into our project and use layout if needed to control when that update happens when we change our constraint values. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this out of the animation function. I'll put it right here. And then inside of animate, that's what I'm going to call layout if needed. Okay, let's try it now and see how it looks. All right, that looks way better. Okay, that's it. There are three simple steps to constraint-based animation. First, you'll need to create an outlet for the constraint that you'll be changing. Then, in your code, you change the value of the constraint using its constant property. And the last thing you'll do is call layout if needed inside your uiview.animate function. All right, thanks, guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing so you'll get notified when my 
new videos come out. And if you'd like to help out, you can provide a translation for the title in the description of this video so people that speak your language or people in your country can better find this video. Thanks, guys.